feedback uh, today by viewer request I'm going to do a very quick look at my GPS disciplined oscillator he had asked me what I was using for a GPS disciplined oscillator and would I do a quick video on it so here is that video sitting back here at the back of this very messy end of the bench is one of those Chinese GPS DO units uh, these are hundred and fifty dollars delivered with uh, antenna and power supply and they're very very small sitting right there below it that's a sharpie pen just below that frequency counter now that frequency counter and the voltmeter just below it are not part of the unit they are used with my uh, Hewlett Packard Q meter it just made a convenient place to stack everything up the white cable goes off to uh, a GPS antenna which is mounted up on my tower that is not necessary I just wanted a weatherproof and uh, outside antenna the unit comes with this little patch antenna that's right here on the bench with about 40 feet of cable and there's nothing wrong with this it works perfectly fine but it didn't look like it was going to survive uh, the New England weather very long and I figured I wanted something up in the clear so I bought a coil of a hundred feet of 75 ohm TV coax cable this came from the home improvement store and connected it here ran it through the shack and ran it as far up the tower as it would reach which was about the 40 foot level it's a hundred foot coil so it's about a hundred feet from here to where the antenna is up on the tower the antenna I purchased is this one it's a little conical unit I got this on eBay for 20 bucks and again this isn't a hundred percent necessary but I just wanted an outside antenna that was going to be weatherproof these have a built-in or that antenna has a built-in 20 DB preamplifier and uh, it's got an end connector on the bottom of it and I put an end connector and adapter to F and ran the F connector uh, through the 75 ohm coax the 75 ohm coax came with F connectors yes that's a 1.5 to 1 VSWR big deal there's a 20 DB preamplifier and any loss in the cable or anything that's lost from the conversion from 50 to 75 ohms is absolutely immaterial it just doesn't matter you're gonna get so much signal down this end of the coax that this little unit's gonna work fine this comes with the power supply it has a one pulse per second output let's see if we can get the camera to focus I don't know if it will no oh there it goes it has a one uh, pulse per second output so you can use that to clock other items it has an IRS 232 output you can take a look at what satellites you're tracking it just sits there 24 7 consuming a couple of watts and supplying everything I run it all through a distribution amplifier right here and that's a 75 ohm distribution amplifier that's uh, actually for video works just fine I did a couple of tweaks to bring the impedance closer to 50 ohms you don't even have to do that it introduces a little bit of distortion in the sine wave nothing you run on this is going to care you're you're not running laboratory precision standard here you just want a decent time base now comparing this thing to two Agilent GPS DOs as near as I could figure this thing has about two uh, micro uh, 200 microhertz of error that's point zero 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 two so that's four decimal places out so at 10 megahertz it's off about point zero 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 two Hertz which is close enough for the girls that I date believe me and it just sits back there on the windowsill in an unused window uh, underneath the ledge of equipment here on this side and in fact way up there on the top is my old rubidium standard and I used this for a number of years I bought that on eBay that was about a hundred bucks for just the standard then I built the enclosure I put a lamp a meter to monitor the lamp voltage a power supply is built in yada yada and a few years later found out that was off about 10 Hertz now I've since repaired it and use it for a backup standard 
but this as long as it's running is going to be within a cup a fraction of a hertz because it's constantly pulling the gps satellites not as stable perhaps as a gps rubidium standard but hundreds of dollars cheaper and how did i verify the frequency on this well let me show you real quick okay what we have in front of us now is my tektronix 2465b four channel scope and I'm only using two channels at the moment. At the time, we were doing four-channel trace because we had two Agilents as well as this and something else running at the same time. On the bottom, I've plugged in my rubidium standard, which is cold and has been off for some time now. And I'm going to turn it on. And at first, it's just going to be a blur because this is not going to be locked. And as it gets closer and closer to being warmed up in the lock, you'll see the sine wave crossing slow down. So I've turned it on, and you can see right now it's nowhere near lock. And it's going to begin to slow down and slow down and slow down, and it will start heading the other direction as it tries to find lock with the rubidium and it will begin to go the other way there we go and it'll do this two or three times until the rubidium warms up enough for an internal lock now it's going to take this thing probably half an hour or an hour to actually settle down to its true accuracy but this is how we compared this uh, gps disciplined oscillator to the two agilent oscillators and when you get it down to where the crossing of the sine wave is over an hour and a half, you're getting down into the uh, microhertz region, 200 microhertz. It works out to be uh, 5,000 seconds for a crossing would be the 0 .002. So when we got over, to, uh, over an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes without having a crossing, I knew I was pretty much nailed frequency-wise. Now, are there better ways to do it with data logging, yada, yada, yada? Sure, there are. I didn't have a data logger. I didn't want to write any software. I just threw it up on the scope, and I had plenty of time. I was sitting down here, and I would just monitor the scope occasionally. Now, we should be getting pretty close to lock on the, uh, on the rubidium standard, unless it's going to make a liar out of me, but it should be kicking on in a minute. It usually only takes it a couple of minutes to finally find its lock. <clears throat> right now it's just shifting back and forth, back and forth. The uh, automatic, the AFC is, is trying to find that point where internally it will lock to the rubidium oscillator. And again, it has to come up to temperature, and it won't be at full stability for, you know, a couple of hours. Now the rubidiums are good, the problem was my rubidium standard turned out to be about 10 hertz off and I actually had to go inside and change a resistor to bring that back into spec before I could trim it back into spec. It had drifted uh, far enough out of spec and I wanted something that I knew was going to stay on frequency and so I bought that uh, little GPS uh, disciplined oscillator. Here we go. I think we might see a lock here pretty soon. Nope, it's still going back the other way. But not as fast this time. Oh, there it goes. Hmm, going to make a liar out of me. Maybe I should cut some of this out. And I guess it's going to take a while because it's cool down here in the basement. It's probably taking a while to come up the temperature. Bang, there it goes. Okay, now it has achieved lock. Now, you see there's a difference between the two points. That's just because of where the trigger point is. I can probably get that to shift. But, as you can see, it's pretty much locked on frequency now. There's very little shift between this sine wave and this sine wave. So the rubidium standard is in pretty good condition. If you were to sit here for 20 minutes, or actually I'm seeing the drift right now. The rubidium is not quite warmed up, and you're going to see this point is slowly sliding over to that position. So what you could do is time this and count the transitions, and you would know exactly how far off this oscillator was from the reference. 
And this is actually how I do frequency counters. When I have an inexpensive frequency counter on the bench that needs its oscillator, its time base adjusted, if it has a 10 megahertz oscillator, I'll set it up and compare its oscillator to my GPS DO, my GPS disciplined oscillator. It's a much faster and more accurate way to get the oscillator and the frequency counter netted in than it is to try to look at the reading on the frequency counter and chase the pot and watch the counts go up and watch the counts go down. It's aggravating and annoying. I simply sample the 10 megahertz oscillator when I've got the two of them so there's no relative motion between the two. That's about as good as it's going to get on one of those inexpensive frequency counters that doesn't have an oven, a crystal oven in it. Now up here my service monitor, my Hewlett Packard service monitor, this has its own internal rubidium standard which is extremely precise. After about a 20 minute warm up this thing is just rock solid but this is a huge power hog and it's got all kinds of fans in it and it makes a lot of noise in the shack and who wants to use that as a frequency standard. It's usable as a frequency standard. I can plug my GPS DO into this or I can take the oscillator output from this at 10 megahertz and use this for a frequency standard. The uh, uh, the Yet YIG, Yttrium uh, something garnet, I forget it. The YIG oscillator in this, did I say rubidium earlier? I was wrong. The YIG oscillator in this is extremely accurate and extremely stable, but who wants to run that huge beast and listen to the fans run and soaking up, you know, 200 watts worth of power? Actually, 216 watts is what it, uh, I measured it at. So there you have it. Uh, short and sweet. You can see that the GPS DO agrees with my repaired rubidium standard. Those have been referenced to two lucent uh, GPS DOs. Everything's in agreement. In fact, the GPS DO here is better in comparison to the Lucent standards than my Rubidium standard is. My Rubidium standard has a, oh, I forget what the exact error is. It, it's a few millihertz, and uh, while very, very good, it doesn't compare with the GPS disciplined oscillator for $150. Okay, I want to try to keep this short and sweet. People don't want to listen to me drone on forever. That's what I'm using. It works. Look for them on eBay. They'll be priced anywhere from $200 plus dollars to $149.95. And there's no difference between them. Just shop around. Find the $149.95 one delivered with power supply and antenna. And you'll have a very good frequency reference for your shack. No, it won't be lab standard. No, it won't meet, you know. Hey, you're referenced to Boulder, Colorado, the National Time Institute. It's good enough. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Hope you found this useful. See you.